Hey everyone, I'm here today to show you guys how to make a Pikmin 3 um custom map, like a model itself. It's gonna be like a full tutorial. I'm gonna cover the visual model, the collision, um, the different types of you know material sound, pathing, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna be using Blender for this tutorial. You can use 3ds Max or whatever 3D modeling program you're most comfortable with. It's pretty simple, so if you just want to make something quick, and you can just use Blender, because I'm using it. So, so what you're going to need before you get started is you need the Pikmin 3 files, of course. If you try to play custom maps on the Wii U console, it's going to lag so bad. And I'm not even joking, guys. It's so bad that it makes Smash Bros. Ultimate Online enjoyable. <laughs> so, but on Switch, uh, if you load custom maps on the actual Switch console, it, it runs pretty well. Yep, you're going to need uh, you need the game files. You need to extract some of your know, maps, some of your textures you want to use, whatever it is, you're going to need um, the collisions converter, which I'll link in the description. This one makes the, the collision file. You're going to need switch toolbox, you can use from like the previous tutorials to make a uh, custom mission mode stuff. And you're going to need the latest version of the Pikmin 3 generators file that's found on the Hokute hacker server. I'm using my this desert map that I just built like you know in a couple hours. Once you have your model the map like say you modeled out your map already and you like it you want to use it and then say if you want to import a map like you want to import something from Mario 64 or from Pokemon or whichever as long as you have your model the map perfect you have your model and that's it. But now what I recommend doing is to extract a few things to scale the map properly. So you want to go ahead and open up your Pikmin 3 files. You want to go into player and the Pikmin all ZSC file. Open that file and extract player A, player B. Just extract a, a model of like a captain so you see how big it is compared to the, uh, the model. Another thing is um, you go into the object folder. You can extract one of the gates like the bomb gate to you know me measure things properly and make sure everything's in scale and a bridge model as well so you can see you know how if you want to use a bridge in a level you can just place the model of the bridge as a reference you can also use the ship as a starter point that's what i have the hokute ship there so that's why so yeah go around and extract some of the pikmin 3 models and import them into blender so this is how you would import that you know extracted model into blender so you go to file import DAE a collada because Pikmin 3 files are DAE if, once you export them. So um, for example, I'm going to use the ship underscore OBJ. That's the Drake model. And then you can just drag it around. See how it compares to your map. Like, okay, this is fine. It looks okay. Um, this is actually like an older version of the Drake I made a long time ago, which is, you know, <laughs> don't worry about it. But yeah, so if you like it there, it looks cool. Okay, okay, perfect. You got the size perfect. Um, so I'm just gonna get rid of Drake because I don't need it. I already have, um, the Pikmin 2 one right here. Here's my Olimar that I've had. He's rather small. For example, here's a gate here. I'm using it to, you know, scale the level, comparing it between the rocks on the sides and the path. Here's a bridge, scaling it, you know, between, you know, these two landmasses, just to, you know, to see how big, you know, you need your model to be. So once your map is perfectly done, it's everything how you wanted it to be, and you're ready to export it into Pikmin 3. First things first, get rid of all the objects you've imported, you know, from the Pikmin 3 itself. So the Olimar size, the ship size, um, the gates, the bridges, just everything of those models, just get rid of them. Because we don't, we're gonna import those into the game itself. So we don't need them, they can perish. Okay guys, now that your map is uh, cleaned up from the Pikmin 3 objects, what you wanna do first is file, export, FBX. Now you can export an FBX because that's how Toolbox will be able to load in the thing. So save it wherever. I need to save it into my custom map folder location. Desert attempt name it, whatever you want. I'll just name it 68 because I already made two of them prior. And you want to make sure your apply scalings is FBX all. Go ahead and press export. And there's your FBX. That's your visual model. Okay, we're exporting the visual model. Now, this is an extra step, but I like to do it because it's easier. Is to export the Colada, the DAE. You go put it in the same place. And this is how you're going to get your textures that are used in the model easily. So just go ahead and export the Colada file. I'm not going to do it because I've already done it. So I already have the textures here. Okay, cool. 
So now you've exported your visual model and you got your textures. Now it's time to export your collision model and oh boy, I love exporting collisions because this converter doesn't like it when your model has a lot of triangles in one area. So make sure your model is a bit cleaned up, it's smoothed out, there's not that much triangles, not that big polygon count, and, and then it'll work normally. Before we do anything, let's edit the sound effects that the captains make while walking on the floor. So if you export a collision normally without doing anything, uh, it's going to give you like a default dirt sound effect. So first we're going to give it uh, a sand sound effect as they walk. So we're going to just select the floor here of my model and then go into the shading tab at the top. And essentially we're just going to give a name to the floor that we have selected here. So make sure it's selected, hit tab to enter the uh, edit mode. Select the top and you want to name the material and then you want to type in collision underscore type zero X and then we have to fill in a end set of values. So for instance, we're going to use zero X zero five oh four because that is the sand sound effect. So we're going to type in zero X zero five oh four. In my case, it's sand. If you wanted to use, you know, snow, ice, grass. You will have to, I'll, I'll give you this small little list, but then you will have to e like export a Pikmin 3 maps collision and then look what it's named there. So that's one way to find out, but yeah. And now this top part of this, you know, cube should be named collision type that. So you can go back out of the shading, go ahead and go on layout. And now we're back into our model. Now we want to export the collision file itself. So. We're going to file our collision, export as a wavefront OBJ, and just name it whatever it is you want. I'll just do it again for this uh, tutorial. And then over here under geometry, you want to make sure triangulate faces is checked. So I have that checked and go ahead and export. Okay, now you want to have two folders open. Uh, first folder being where you exported your visual model and your collision model. So over here is where I have the visual model, the one we just made. Ignore 66 and 67. This is the one we just made. Maybe it's easier if I do a list like this. So yeah, this one is ours, 68. This is our visual, this is the FBX. We're gonna get to that one in a second, but first we're gonna make the collision one. So it'll be this one right here, 66 collisions. This is the one we've just exported as OBJ. And now we want to use this tool. I think it was made by Yoshi2, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a while, but I'll link. Uh, it's it's in the Hokute Hacker server. Uh, I'll double check if it is. Um, so yeah, you want to extract the tool. Download it from um, where you uploaded it. Extract it. Open up OBJ to BGIMP. And to see this converter batch file, you want to drag the OBJ collision file that you just exported. And you want to drag it on top of convert. And you'll get this command block type of box. Just let it do its thing. The length of how long it'll take to convert depends on how many, you know, polygons, how big your map is. But as long as you don't have any triangles, like I said earlier, you shouldn't have any problems. And there you go. It's now done. It'll show just done right there. So you can just press any key to continue. So now you have your newly created file, uh, 66 collisions OBJ BGIM. This is the one we need. This is the, the file that Pikmin 3 is going to recognize as a collision and we're going to use it for our map. So just keep it there. Keep it in a safe place. I do want to show you what it looks like if um, the, the program has an error. So if you see like a bunch of like these numbers, uh, it means like a, a certain area of your map has too many triangles. You just got to go around the model and clean it up. You want to decimate, you know, the geometry, the mesh and all that kind of stuff just to make sure that your collision model is neat as possible because Pikmin 3 really doesn't like that much, you know, triangles in one area. Now we're going to actually import the map into the game in this next segment. Okay, so now I have um, two folders open again. So the left side is my mod pack directory. So look at wherever um, your Yuzu mod packs are for Pikmin 3. Uh, so I'm going to use this Awakening Wood pack. Um, it could be your ROM hack for whatever um, ROM hack you're working on. So go into the ROM FS, CMCMN, and into the, like, the main directory of files here. 
And then on the right side is my main Pikmin 3 Deluxe files, the ones that I have from my copy. Um, this is not modded out anyway, this is not edited, this is vanilla files, so I have these as backup. So in the vanilla files, you want to go into CMCMN, and then we go into the map folder. And over here, we're going to scroll down. You can use whatever map you want, but I'm going to use Thirsty Desert as an example. So I know that Thirsty Desert is Miz2 and Miz2 underscore text. If you don't know what map is what, you can just open side the CS file with the Switch Toolbox. And then you can just open the model that way and see what it is. Or you can go on to the Pikmin 3 Identifiers website, which is super useful. So once you have your map chosen, just select the two files, the Miz2 and the Miz2 text. Copy those. Open up the map folder in your ROM hack pack. And just paste those in there. Alright, so inside your map folder uh, in your ROM hack pack, you want to open up the Miz2 text file first with your Switch Toolbox. You can drag it in. And here we are in the Switch Toolbox. Want to open up this plus sign here. And you see Miz2 BGMP. We want to replace this file with the, with the collision file that we just converted using OBJ to BGMP. So just go ahead and locate your uh, collision file. And here it is right here, part 66 collision OBJ BGM file that we just made. Go ahead and select that. And there you go, it's replace. Make sure you save it. Compress with Yaz Zero. And there you go, collision is all done. You just finished the collision. So now you want to open up Miz 2, the actual Miz 2. Now do the same way and open up all these folders. Open up this model BFrez archive. Open up model and open up textures. So here we have Thirsty Desert's original model. We're just gonna straight up replace. Okay, here you go, give it a good look at it. You can go ahead and see all the textures in here. We're just gonna get rid of it. So get rid of all these textures. You can press Control Delete as a shortcut. So I'm just gonna kill all these textures of Thirsty Desert. Goodbye guys, we don't need you anymore. See ya. Now, the one texture you want to save is room 0 Proj shadow. Now, what this file does is that it projects a shadow from above the map. So it looks like um your you know your map is not too bright, your map is not too dark. So, so for example, if this um file was painted all gray, the map will look dim and dark. But if it's painted all white, then it's gonna be like shiny and you know sunny and you know that kind of stuff. So it's a way that Pikmin 3 makes shadows for the map. So it's actually pretty clever how they did this. So now you want to keep this there. You can also go ahead and remove Miss 2 underscore uh, move. It does just like moving plants that's in the map itself. You can just go ahead and delete it. And now we want to select Miss 2 replace. Now you want to replace this model with the FPX model that you've exported a while ago in Blender. So it was uh, for us, it was Desert Map Attempt 68. Now you want to make sure these are checked. And you also want to make sure your enable UVs and enable vertex colors are checked as well. And you want to use a material file. So this is similar to the custom treasures video I've made a while ago. So if you ha still have that material file from the last video, if you don't, you can go onto that video and just download it from there. I put in that description and you could just use that material file. So just load in that material file. And I believe it was called material a DX is what I uploaded. All right, here we go. And here's the map that we had in blender. You see it over there. And now we want to import our textures into this textures folder so go ahead and right click textures import texture and this is why we had that um that we exported the day file so if we exported the dae file we get our textures here so we just select all of them open and just press ok for all and our textures are automatically loaded into the map now you want to go to your material section since we have a transparent image like um, the circle, the map e circle layout that I've taken from Formidable Oak. This has a transparent image. So if, for example, if your model has plants, if it has, you know, like any transparent image, like leaves or flowers, and if you put it into the map, it's going to show like a black box behind, you know, where it's supposed to be transparent. So 
say you have uh, highlighted your material file for the plant, like for example, it's this circle marking on the ground. You want to replace this with another material file that I've exported from the game. So it would be the material plant that I've taken from another map. So if you like open up a map from, you know, the original game files and exported that material that you found on like a leaf or a flower, it would work the same way. So go ahead and open that. And now this is going to be transparent in game. And you want to just edit the texture it's uh, choosing. So it was map E circle. And I'm going to change the these ones right here because these these don't have we don't have this texture in the game itself or in the in the model itself so we're just going to change it to this basic nm and we're going to change the other one to the basic spm and there we go so this is what you do if you have you know a plant or you know something transparent like a gate or whatever it is maybe if you wanted to fix that black um background bug for like a plant or a leaf so now you should be done now Everything's assigned properly. We have all the textures. We kept the room shadow. You can also make your own shadow if you wanted to, but for now, we're just going to keep it Thirsty Deserts. Now you want to press the save button. Yes, with the S0, compress with that always. And there you go. Shouldn't take too long, but if your map is bigger than what it's supposed to be, then it'll pretty much take a long time. So now that is done, you can go ahead and close Switch Toolbox for now. All right, so now we're going to get into the generator file. So in your mod pack, you want to go into your generator and you want to make sure you have a folder that's name of the corresponding map that you replaced earlier. So I replaced Thirsty's Desert. I would mean I will need a folder named Miz2. So then you could just borrow, you know, an archive of some sort. You can like go into like the original game files, borrow a Poco uh scs file just drop it in here i already have one in here uh pre-made because i wanted to make sure this map was working so yeah i uh, have my uh once you get your poco generator file it's pretty much um how it is in my previous video when i showed you how to edit a mission mode level it's basically the same idea just export the one export the default export the plant and pathing we're gonna get to pathing in a little bit um we do now have a way to edit paths, so I'm going to show you how to make your own pathways now. So once you have all those files extracted, you want to download the Pikmin Gen Editor, or if you already had it from, you know, the prior tutorials of prior how to make uh, mission mode edits. Um, you want to download the Pikmin Gen Editor uh, made by Yoshi2 that's on Hokute Hacker server. You want to just go ahead and open up the program. And now we're inside the editor. You want to open up the geometry, so you go to the geometry tab up here load bgimp because that's the one that we made earlier now you just want to press the arrow here see the the down arrow pikmin 3 map collision bgimp now what you want to do is use the collision that you've like exported like a couple minutes ago the one that you replaced inside that ms2 text archive so you just want to load that file with the gen editor and here's our map model and it's all in all its glory here's the misc 3d view now if you already know how to control this uh editor great if you don't i'll give you a quick rundown uh, and top down view mouse wheel zoom in and out i'll uh, hold the mouse wheel pan around add object remove object all the kind of stuff and if you're in 3d shift and wasd move the camera around and then Q raises it, E lowers it. And the right click, change the camera direction. Okay, so let's get started. Now, like the previous uh, time where I, I told you guys how to edit a map, you want to go ahead and open up the default and the one. And just make sure you remove everything in that map besides, you know, the captains and the rocket and then the Pikmin you want to use. So in my default file, I have my starting position, I have my, you know, my two captains. Just play around whatever it is you want to play around with and just add whatever you want. Okay, I have the gate here already. And then in your one file, just do the same thing. Get rid of anything that you don't want and just add the stuff that you want in your level. So I have like bulb orbs, I have an apple. Just, you know, make up your Pikmin level that you want, you know, what objects you want placed in this, you know, this level. Like for example, I'm going to place a banana on, uh, on this, you know, ledge here. Add object, boom, that's a quick refresher for you guys. That's gonna fall down, <laughs> I don't care. Um, but yeah, 
So how do we make our custom paths? So you're going to need the latest version, like I mentioned before, because the latest version added custom path support. So you want to add object. Now you should see a thing called waypoint in the category. So just choose waypoint and press add object. Now you can just press anywhere on the map and you get this little dot right here. So these dots, we're going to connect them together. So this is what tells, what's going to tell the Pikmin where to go. So just place them around the map wherever you want. I'll do one up here. I'll do one on this ledge. Just basically just place them around. All right, so now that you have your waypoints added, now I'm going to show you how to connect them. So you just want to go ahead and click one of the waypoints. And then you see add path here. Type in, I'm oh, not typing, press add path and then just start connecting by selecting the other nodes that you place on the map. And it'll automatically create this, you know, arrow type thing right here. So just keep going up and connect all your waypoints to whoever you want to see fit. And then make sure you go backwards as well. So the path that you took to make the, the arrows go back again because we need a way for the Pikmin to go back and forth. This also works with the, the go here function in the the Pikmin 3 uh, game itself. So yeah, you can just go back and forth, connect all these paths together. Make sure not to miss a single one. And just go back. Do that. Perfect. Now just go ahead and make sure you uncheck add path before you select another one. Otherwise it will connect this one all the way up here. So yeah, just a little just a little warning before <laughs> you get um messed up some paths. So I should do the same thing in the other area. Very, very good. Do it like that. And there we go. I'm not gonna connect these just for the sake of the video because I just wanna show you how to how it works. So oh I forgot this guy up here. Now we can move him here. You can also change the radius, so if you have like a 150 radius, it'll make it easier for the Pikmin to, you know, respond to the, uh, the pathway and it'll take the right pathway. Alright, there you go. You got some paths made. Now I want to show you how to make a geyser. So, basically, you just want to add another waypoint from before. You add one right here, and then you add a second one. So, let me go into 3D view. And we're going to change this waypoint. We're going to add the path from this one path node to the geyser that we're going to make. And then do this one for the second one. And then connect it to that one. Now, you might be thinking, wait, this doesn't make any sense. How is the Pikmin going to climb up this wall? Well, it's not. We're making a geyser, remember. So the second path node, we're just going to raise it up in the sky. And then we're just going to move this closer to the wall. And then you want to change the node type to I think either 33 or another no or another value. There is the README in the uh, when you install the Pikmin 3 Gen tool. There is a README in there, and it shows like a documented list uh, by Lazy Boy of what different types of path path nodes. Uh, I really recommend that you read that list if you're ever lost or somewhere. So yeah, so Lazy is truly a goat for making that. And you know, just play around with your path. Make sure everything's like, you know, how you want it to be. I'm gonna move these pellet posies around. And there you go. We have a geyser, working geyser. It'll work with Pikmin, it'll work with captains. And then we have our pathway. So, uh, in order to save paths, it's not the same way as you save, you know, the one file or the default file. You have to go to the paths tab right here and you save paths as. So then open up the ROM pack that you had, go inside that gen folder, Ms. 2 and you can save those along with the 1 and default, and save. So if you ever wanted to edit the path again, you just open up the same tab, the paths tab, and load path, and choose that same text file. Alright, so now back onto your Ms. 2 folder, you want to just open up the POCO file one more time. And then you see all the text here. Now just replace any text file that you, you know, edited with the, uh, with the gen file. So go ahead and just replace all those files again. So Ms. 2, replace the 1, 
We're going to replace the default, and now we're going to replace the path file. Click save, yes, we've got zero, okay. And now we have fully assembled our custom map, and I'm going to show you how it runs in-game. So I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, here we are in mission mode. We've replaced Thirsty Desert, like I said. And if you want to check the mini-map, we have our banana. So we have the updated, um... We have the updated uh, gen file. We have our geyser right there. That little white dot is the geyser. Um, so yeah, I will show you guys how to properly change this 2D radar another day. I just don't have like a, you know, like a, a perfect uh, method for it. I have a method, but it's not as good. So it's not as good as Lazy's method. So I'm going to research that a little bit more. But let's go ahead and test our custom map. And here we are, we've loaded into the custom map! Come here, Louie. Oh my god, guys, this is so cool. Also, I forgot to remove this, uh, rocket... Rocket landing from the collision file, so that's why I'm sinking in. But, uh, but yeah, here we go. Here's our geyser, guys. We have made the geyser, let's ride it. Woohoo! Nice. And this guy got stuck. <laughs> so yeah, just make sure you play around with your, uh, pathing. And then we can just raise some Pikmin in our own desert map, guys. Oh my god, I'm so excited, man. Oh my god, bro. This is so fun. But yeah, this is how this is how it is. See, the Pikmin has their pathing working. So I'm like getting excited because this is possible now. Oh my god, but yeah. Oh yeah, let me show you uh, the difference in the footsteps. So this is what it sound like if um uh, you didn't uh, name that uh, material file as like you know the collision. That's the default uh you know uh, walking sound. This is now this is the the sand sound now that we've changed it. And see, it's just, it's just so cool, man. I I cannot wait to see like all the custom maps in the future. There is a, a hack being made by Vinny at the moment, and he's like made so many custom maps, and I cannot wait to play the freaking map. So yeah, here's our banana up there. It's stuck, but you know, we do what we do. We threw the bolt warp there, we're gonna kill this guy. This is so awesome, guys. No, don't eat the piggies! Come on, come on, kill him! This is turning into like a custom level <laughs> video as itself. Oh my god, but yeah, here we go. Carry the apple. The apple's gonna make its way back to the ship. And yeah, here we go. Fully functional um, Pikmin 3 map. So yeah, like I said, we're gonna show you another day how to replace the, the radar. But yeah, there you go, guys. That's how you make your very own Pikmin 3 custom map model. Yep, I hope you have a great day. And I hope this tutorial was very, very helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great night, guys.